Hi friends! A quality printed circuit board is a guarantee of reliable operation of both self-made and factory devices. Using laser printer and ironing technology is the cheapest method of creating printed circuit boards at home. For these purposes, you only need the common household iron and a conventional laser printer. How to create a printed circuit board in this way has been shown many times, so we will not stop on this in detail. But there are a few nuances that, if you follow them, your PCBs will be of very high quality. First, the cartridge on the printer should be new, preferably not refilled. In the printer settings, you must turn off the toner save mode, set the toner setting to the darkest and the resolution as high as possible. I advise you to print on photo paper or on pages from glossy magazines. I usually print on photo paper which I buy in bulk so it goes cheaper. After printing, we get a template of the printed circuit board which must be transferred to a foil on Textilite. For this purpose, the iron is used. The ideally smooth surface of the heating surface of the iron also plays a significant role. I have an ancient and heavy iron, exactly what I need. It takes about 90 seconds to iron the board, but it all depends on the board itself. An important moment in the stage of transferring the pattern is a uniform pressure, force and temperature. The optimal temperature is about 200 degrees Celsius, it can be up to 230. But the problem of ironing technology is that it takes us 90 seconds to apply some effort and to iron the board. In fact, ironing isn't necessary if the foil has a flat, clean surface and the textile itself isn't deformed. The creation of printed circuit boards at home takes some time and the results not always satisfy your needs. So, we recommend our permanent sponsor, GLCPCB, one of the largest services specialized in the production of industrial printed circuit boards. Just upload your Gerber file, select the desired options and that's all. The printed circuit board for your new project will be produced as soon as possible. Free shipping is available for the first order and the highest quality of performance is guaranteed. The most common household laminator can completely replace the iron. The advantage is that when using a laminator, the transfer time of the drawing will be reduced to 10 to 20 seconds. It all depends on the size of the board. And no additional effort is required. The laminator will do everything for us. I opened my old laminator and measured temperature. It turned out that even in the maximum heating mode, the temperature on the rollers which will heat the board is from 140 to 150 degrees. This is clearly not enough for our purposes. But I must note that my laminator is very weak. Maybe other models will have more temperature. You can correct this moment in two ways. Any laminator has a thermal sensor that fixes the value of the rollers. As the temperature increases, the resistance of the temperature sensor changes. The laminator circuit has a comparator. On one of its inputs, it's a divider which consists from a temperature sensor and a resistor with a fixed resistance. The comparator compares the voltage from this divider to the reference and instantly changes the state of its output. The state of the output through the Opto device controls the power thruster or triac, which controls the heating element of the laminator. By changing the resistance of the resistor of this divider, it is possible to increase the sensor operating temperature. In some laminators, there is an additional trimming resistor for this purpose. You can completely disable the thermal sensor by removing the appropriate slot. But in this case, the thermal sensor itself will be exposed to an abnormal temperature. This can have unpredictable consequences. But we will not dig into the circuit. We simply move the temperature sensor from the roller to some distance, so it will no longer register the real temperature and the track will never turn off the heater. After 20 minutes after turning on the laminator, the temperature is already 200 degrees and you can put a board. For convenience, it is desirable to unscrew the plastic plate in front of the rollers. Now, carefully drag the board from two to three times and that's all.
Next, let the board cool down for 10 to 15 minutes and then throw it into water. The water temperature isn't very critical, desirable the room temperature. In water, the board should stay for about 15 minutes. Then, gently remove the paper. Don't scratch with nails or a toothbrush. Use only fingerprints with light movements as shown in the video. The board is ready to be etched. But before that, we need to carefully inspect it for defects. If there are ragged tracks, we draw them, for example, with nail polish. A little advice, if your cartridge is old, then there may be some kind of grids on large parts of the board. In this case, you can take a cut and swap moistened with a solvent or acetone and treat these areas as shown in the video. Be extremely careful, process the sections in short intervals. You don't need to wipe the board, otherwise all the work will be damaged. Acetone partially dissolves the toner and it will fill the exposed areas. Then the board can be etched. There are a lot of ways, traditional and exotic. I use two main methods, critic acid with hydrogen peroxide or copper sulfate. After etching, the board is cleaned of the toner. The copper surface is treated with fine sandpaper. The next stage is thinning the tracks, then drilling and installing the components, but we will talk about this some other time. Dear friends, links to different soldering accessories can be found in the description. Don't forget to rate this video if it was useful, subscribe to the channel and our group on Facebook. Links are in the description. Now I have to say goodbye until new meetings. With you was Kaysian TV.